Hello and welcome to Project V8 Hillman in Pulski. Um, recently I made the mistake of measuring a V8 Rover engine and realised it was only two inches longer than an imp engine. So I decided to try and fit one. I hope you enjoy the uh, content and uh, any feedback greatly appreciated. Hi and welcome to Project V8 powered Hillman Husky. Um, might sound like a bit of a really stupid project but um, it'll be fun um, until the gearbox explodes anyway but it's not for racing it's just for a bit of fun so it's just to talk you through where we're up to this is a 4.6 uh, p38 range of a bottom end what i've done is i've uh, made a little bush and fitted an imp spigot bush in the end of the crank on the shaft one so we've now got something to center on and then i've took um a rover v8 flywheel and turned it into what we call a button flywheel to run with a seven and a quarter clutch. And then I've took a flex plate off an automatic and I've bolted it on the back. These bolts come right through from the back because what, what it's all about is overall length. I need the engine to be as short and as close to the gearbox as possible so that I can get it all in behind the back panel of a standard car. So as you can see there, I've machined the block a little bit just with a grinder just to get some clearance. This all does actually all turn. So obviously I'll have to space the starter motor off a little bit to compensate for that. I've also chopped up a Range Rover um, bell housing um, and machined it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically balance the uh, gearbox with the clutch so it's all central. And then we're going to have a look at the offsets and the space and decide um, if it's all going to be able to work before I go to the trouble of uh, having an adapter plate made to mount the remainder of the Hillman gearbox. This is a scrap gearbox that I've, I've basically machined uh, the end of it off uh, because, like I say, I want to get it as close as possible so that I keep the overall length down on the uh, entire engine and gearbox. Okay. Okay, we've got the uh, input shaft entering in through the clutch now into the spigot bush. So that gives us a nice, nice centre to start with. Obviously, it will have a bit of um, adjustment in it. We'll have to do that at the end. But um, for the time being, it gives a rough idea of where we are. This clutch, incidentally, used to be a twin plate clutch. Um, what I've done is I've machined the post down. And I've got the fingers just slightly up from level. So I know that we've got enough movement for the clutch to disengage when we uh, fit all the slave cylinder assembly. So it's just a single plate seven and a quarter, which for the torque that we're gonna want to put through this gearbox, that'll be ample. Um, certainly more enough to send the pinion shaft into next year. Right, a little update on the V8 imp or husky, should we say, or van. I've basically, uh, I was going to get all this made by something properly. I decided it, it, it was probably something I could achieve myself with the TIG welder. So I got some 4mm plate. I basically, I just tacked it in a few places just to get a position on it. And then over here, I've got just a doorbell to go. This is the assembly. I've got this balanced now. So I checked with the clock and the uh, input shaft is all true so now when I put the whole uh, gearbox assembly on top she's ready to go now I'll be able to scribe round on the new piece of uh, four mil plate and um, then we can start welding that to that and hopefully the whole thing will come together then um, I've had a few people of my friends that have wandered in the workshop that sort of said why are you doing this and uh, I've got to say um, the end achievement is I, I want to tow my Bond freewheeler to a hill climb event on, a, on the back of my imp van. A um, bit weird I know but it's just a personal thing. Okay over and out for now. Right on with project V8 Husky and we've had quite a bit of work since the last video because basically I made a massive mistake in that I was using the input shaft in the gearbox to center uh, the whole lot 
but because of the muff coupling and also because of the way it all distorted as it cooled down, etc., I ended up with a situation where the, the shaft wasn't central to the um, to the gearbox. So I had to grind it all off basically and start again, uh, which was a bit of a pain, but life is such, excuse the state of my welding, um, it is solid, it just looks terrible, but we'll tidy it up and blast it, etc. later. But what I wanted to share with you was, the way I got around this problem with the input shaft was, I realised there was a diameter inside here where the seal ran for the input shaft on the gearbox. And I thought, well, if I make a solid bush with like a thou clearance, then in theory, it will all centre on that. And it's so tight, I can't get it out. But there you go. So now we can see the input shaft goes in. That's all been clocked up in the clutch and the, and the spigot bush. And then we've got a nice equal distance around there. I've got my interference bush here, which replaces the oil seal. Obviously, I'm just using this purely for centering purposes. And what I've done is I've I've welded it here, welded it here, welded it here, and, and kept the heat transfer because as soon as you weld aluminium, it, it, it pulls, you know? So we have to keep on chasing it. So I've chased it round, and now we've got a situation where, if I get a locking stick, Nice and snug, but it's not tight. So we know there's no pressure on it. So when the, the gearbox with the, all the cogs inside it, well, sorry, the gears inside it goes on, we know that it'll all um, be happy and set, set, set central, etc. So uh, yeah, quite pleased with all that. It's worked out okay. And uh, there's the doorbell. So that's me over and out. We'll get it blasted. Okay, the uh, bell housing is now complete and ready to uh, be put onto the standard Hillman Inc gearbox. Um, you can go easy on me in the comments section regarding my atrocious welding. Um, I haven't done a welding course as you probably guessed. I just bought a TIG welder off eBay and uh, had a go at snotting it together. So it's all snotted on. I've basically I put a couple of uh, bridges to try and help the stresses and the strains. It's only thin plate this. And we've got a couple of ties at the top as well to keep everything rigid. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put this bell housing onto the imp gearbox. Now this is just a bog standard Ilman imp gearbox. Um, it's actually quite a late one. It's, it's, if you can see there, it's a Roots 4. So it's not a Roots 5, but it's a Roots 4. But if you're ever looking to buy an imp gearbox and you want to know the best one to buy, the best ones to buy are the 4 and 5. Um, because they have this extra rib. So if you draw a line between the drain plug and the output drive on the near side, uh, basically you get an extra rib in there. They're normally smooth here on the earlier boxes. So I've had a little look inside this box, just check the synchros had a you know, bit of grip on them, no major debris in it. It was all pretty clean. So I thought, right, this can be the Rover V8 powered gearbox. So... I didn't want to put um, posh parts inside it because there's just a chance that the torque of this engine is going to um, break it instantly, which would be disastrous. I'm hoping we can drive it gently and uh, just enjoy it for a bit, and then we'll creep up on it, making it stronger. But that's another another area. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is this bell housing isn't off, obviously, off this gearbox casing. And something I wanted to make a point about was this hole here where the bearing uh, housing sits is line board so this part of the casting is matched to this part of the casting so we can't just put this one straight onto that one what we need to do is take this one apart we're going to clamp it back on again without a diff in it and use the bore mic to get a size when we've got a size we can then bolt this one on and we can measure it and we'll decide if it's going to cope or if it's going to be, oh, that's not right, that won't work. We'll end up either with a too small a hole, which means that it could crack when we tighten it up, or we can end up with too big a hole, so basically it doesn't grip the bearing housing when it's clamped up, which will mean the diff will float around and we'll have all sorts of problems. So we'll, uh, I'll stop waffling now. We'll get on with taking this apart and then we'll get the uh, bore mic out and see what size the hole is meant to be. 
All right, right, we've got the gearbox bolted back together with the original bell housing on it now, so just so we can have a measure up. So I've took the, um, the, the bearing housing for this side. They are different sizes. This one on the other side is slightly smaller, as you can see. And I've measured it, and it basically comes to 2.877, so that's 2 inches, 877 thousandths of an inch. So that's the OD of this. We've used a 2 to 3 inch micrometer to do that. And now what we've done is this is called a, a bore mic. So I'm using this to, to get a size for the hole. So I've already measured it and basically it's coming out at about two inches, 876. So it's about a thou down, I reckon, using that tool. But really the tool to do it with is, is this, which is a proper bore mic. So put this in the hole and it's a bit hard one-handed but basically we open it up so that the little prongs come out and measure the bore we have to try and remove it and we can see and just change the phone that basically it's 2.875 plus 10 and a bit so that's two inches 800 and 85 and three tenths so what we're basically saying is uh, 87 the whole that this i reckon these are probably size and it's just that this is a little bit of mucking it or something or there's a bit of inaccuracy with the uh, thing so i reckon it's a size on size maybe that should be about half a thousand to a thousand smaller just to allow for a bit of glue around the outside but, you know, amazing tolerances these things were built with back in the day. Anyway, as, of, as this gets hotter, of course, it will expand. What I wanted to talk about as well, very quickly, was the way the job works is this is the differential out of the imp, and these are the bearing cups that sit on each side. You can see a very fine thread inside the bearing housing, and we've got a corresponding thread on the hub. Now, the hub, basically pushes the bearing inside there that bearing's interference is, 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 a, is a slide fit inside there so what happens is this goes in here and we have a little tool we can put a socket in and it turns and basically pushes the bearing across because what we have to do is when we put it back together which I will go into better detail in a minute we want to push this across so that we get the correct clearance between the pinion and the crown wheel. So that's how we adjust it all. And just in case you do end up doing a job like this yourself at home on your imp, a little tip, obviously take these out and wire wheel them and clean them, they're always grubby. Now it has an, see this groove here, it has an o-ring in this groove. And the o-rings are always good. They don't seem to go hard even. But what happens is if you don't lube it all up properly, when you come to undo it for the first time, the rust on the inside of here tears the um, seal and it being dry. So what I always do is I always put them in a paraffin bath or diesel or anything that's like WD-40. Let them soak overnight. And then when you come to unwind them, the seal doesn't tear and you can reuse that seal. Because I don't know where you get them from if they're even available. Um, anyway, little tip there. Right, well... We'll get on with putting the other housing on the uh, gearbox now so we can see if there's a difference in size. Right, okay. I've just bolted the uh, new bell housing for the V8 onto the old Impit gearbox and I've been, I can't believe how lucky I've been. Um, first of all, is I thought, hmm, can't even feel it. So I put the bore mic in it and my worst fear was that basically it was going to be too big, which means we've got to start machining these faces to, to shrink the hole down so we get to pinch but what's actually happened is it's tight um by roughly a thou and a half two thou so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna fettle it with um the bearing scraper and just keep checking it with my bore mic make sure we get it absolutely spot on so we get the correct amount of pinch on the bearing cup and another part which is really pleasing to see if i flip this over and we go in here 
this is the first time it's been assembled on this gearbox you can see the input shaft sits absolutely crack on so what i'm going to do now is when i go through to the other room and bolt this onto the rover engine and make sure with obviously with no clutch on i can see through this window and make sure that my input shaft is sat in the end of the gearbox in the end of the spigot correctly before we go any further right it's a going good day today basically this is the 4.6 rover v8 with the hillman gearbox on the end i've just dropped the bell housing and the gearbox over so we can see without the flywheel on just where the input shaft is sitting obviously i have dry built all this but it is very nice to see that the input shaft is sitting beautifully in the end of the spigot bush there for the crankshaft so now all i've got to do is build the gearbox back up and we'll have to do another video all about building the rover v8, v8 engine which is probably second to the hillman engine in my love for engines so uh, yeah we'll have a bit of fun building that maybe we'll dyno it as well okay right okay we're on the home run with this box now i've just um tied all the bolts up around the uh differential housing um it's all clamped up nicely and used its goo out everything seems to be pinched the diff's nice and smooth as you can see and then if i just balance the camera on here like that he says um you can see the whole thing goes round nice and smoothly and if i if you can just see on the camera there oh, you can't see it <laughs> uh one second the backlash between the crown wheel and pinion is really important when you hear that clunk that basically is five foul which is uh, the clearance between the, the pinion gear and where it meshes into the crown wheel it's very important that because that's where the oil sits so it can lubricate it so we don't want it too tight because it'll bind up and get hot so just to i've gone a bit ahead of myself here these are the output flanges obviously and this is a special tool that we use to put inside them them cups with the fine thread on and you basically we shift by turning this one clockwise and backing this one off we put a preload on the taper bearings which holds the diff in place I won't go into it because it is a bit of a specialist thing that really I'd have to do another video completely on it. But anyway, there we are. That's the gearbox finished. Last thing to do is to put the snap rings on. These just um, locate the outside of the... Okay, I can't do it one handed. But they basically locate the, the two parts. So this outer part is obviously setting the glue and this inner part turns. And when the snap ring goes in, it acts like a split pin. And stops it from undoing itself or timing itself okay so there we are that's the rover v8 gearbox finished all ready to go onto the engine which will be the next video hope you've enjoyed it and you don't think i'm too mad